action. Hi, welcome to my presentation to Nigeria for the NACE 319 final exam presentation. Here to help me with the slide clicking is Michael Hagen, a good friend of mine. Say hi, hi Mike. I'm Matt Kane's good friend, Mike Hagen, and I'll be clicking the slides. Cool. So the genetic order that I chose to do is progeria. Progeria is also known as Hutchinson-Gilford progeria syndrome, or HGPS, and it is a rare fatal genetic condition characterized by an appearance of accelerated aging in children. It's originated from a Greek word that means prematurely old. Although they are born looking healthy, children with progeria begin to display many characteristics of accelerated aging within the first few years of life. Here's a picture of a patient who, hold, who holds progeria, and these facts are brought to you by the Progeria Research Foundation, which I'll talk to you about later in the presentation. Next slide, Mike. Here we're going to talk about the phenotype and the genotype origins of progeria. HGPS is caused by a mutation in the gene called LMNA, pronounced lemon, uh, and this codes for a protein, lemon, that plays an important role in determining the shape of cell's nucleus, which eliminates a lot of important scaffolding. And when the scaffolding is then in place, this creates a lot of inefficiencies in the cells, and they can die very prematurely. Most people who have this disease die within as few as 10 years, and it shows a rapid acceleration of the aging process. It's considered autosomal dominant, which means that you only need one gene to have it dominant in your body. And it's also caused by new mutations in that one protein, which almost always occur in families with no history of such mutations. So it essentially comes up randomly, but if it does come in families, it can be carried down very easily. Next slide, Mike. Biological pathways. Based on the research from Progeria Research Foundation, which is the leading found and founding research on it, it is autosomal dominant, as we talked about, so it's one copy of the gene is sufficient to trigger it. Progeria signs include growth failure, loss of body fat and hair, aged looking skin, stiffness of joints, hip dislocation, generalized osteoclesis, cardiovascular, heart disease, and stroke. And so very, very young in a progeria uh, victim's life will be, you'll look very similar to a healthy baby, but then as they grow older, it's very clear that they're aging much faster and they are carriers of this disease and they're victim to it. So clinical testing and cure efforts, this has been a growing field, it essentially started in 1999 with the development of the Progeria Research Foundation, which is actually based in Massachusetts. They've raised over 29 million, but it's very small in comparison to a lot of other diseases because it's not well known. They argue that around 200 to, 200 to 400 of cases exist in the world, worldwide right now. So it's very limited in terms of how many people actually know about it, who is aware of the disease, and who can actually donate to it. So they did actually, in 2012, come up with the first clinical drug trials, which was helped funded by the Progeria Research Foundation. They said that in 2012, history was made with the discovery that lorifandin, a inhibitor, or FTI, is the first ever treatment for progeria, improving many aspects of the disease, including the vital vascular system. More recent studies conclude that atlantofarbin extends its estimated lifespan. And this is a big progress because there, there has been no treatment prior besides improving quality of life. So increasing any years is going to be very positive progress. It also includes rebuilding the vascular system. That's the scaffolding that I talked about earlier in the presentation. So if there's new ways to build it up, there's going to be more chances at greater lifespan. Hopefully this leads to more uh, research breakthroughs in the future. So one of the big social impacts that I want to talk about is the RPF. That's the research foundation based in Massachusetts that we talked about. What they have is RPF by the numbers. And essentially that's a data sharing tool. It's more creating transparency among people with progeria. So this allows like different barriers to come into play, allow different research to come in, and create like a one centralized database so progress can be held from one central point. What they have stated is that, in other words, everyone benefits by knowing and learning as much as possible about progeria, the scientific and medical communities, the public, and the children. So this is their big statement that they claim. This is why they want to draw in money. This is why they're looking for more research and why they're continually expanding. They also have uh, interest in creating an international program, and this is with patient identification outreach to pa patient families and their physicians, springboard for program enrollment. So this is bringing more people on, increasing the awareness of the disease, and making sure it's more well-known worldwide. Next slide. And here we have a link to my sources. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed. And let's fight for a cure for progeria. But, um, cheat. <laughs>